Greetings, salutations. We hope you made it through the snow for this journey. I, I actually did not. We'll get to that. My name is Jake Query. That's Derek Schultz, who is, you look like a snowman. You're just stoically sitting there frozen. Speaking of frozen, I mean, should we talk about why you're 20 minutes late, half an hour late? Yeah, how about the that? show taping today? And you know what's terrible? I'm terrible with names, Derek. By the way, this is the incredibly creatively and appropriately named Quarry and Schultz program here on ISC Sports Network, brought to you by WGU Indiana. That is Indiana's largest online accredited university. We'll get to more about WGU and what they can do for you, where ambition never rests. Um, but thankfully, the great people... Do people know where we're taping this, right? Well, people know that we're taping this at the ISC Sports Network studios. Okay. I'm not sure so they know about the- it's in It's in a more rural area yeah. than Indianapolis, Indiana. And thankfully, who's your hospitality? And, and I think the gentleman's name was Tony Haskins. I think. I'm not good with names. You're usually pretty good with names. No, I'm not. I mean- I'm the one that's bad with names. So, I was driving. I mean, brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee. The problem is, Derek, I think I need new tires. So I well, have how a, new is well, new? Are I you say at 50K? brand new? No, just close. 42,000 miles. Because isn't that kind of the rule of thumb for I tires, think, 50K? I think. So 42,000 miles, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I'm driving along on County Road whatever here in rural Indiana. And all of a sudden, I'm just driving along, and it's like, I think I just stopped moving. And I put it in the snow. It's got like a snow gear, 4x4, four four, the whole deal. Derek goes flying past me in his little... Fred Flintstone, Honda Civic. Yep. And once you get on the ice, man, nothing you can do. Yeah, and I think, you know, let's let's kind of be honest here. Cautious driving for a normal human being is way different than cautious driving for Jake Quarry. No, what do you mean? Because I've been in the car with you before. I'm an excellent driver. So I excellent know driver. how reckless you can be. I'm not reckless at so all. So when you called, when my phone rang and it was – and it said Jay Query. It still says WNDE, which is a little. I should probably. Yeah, we don't work there yeah, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> probably it's been take a while. it off. It's, yeah. it's been a minute. Um, I knew immediately that you were going to say why that you would, were stuck. Why would my I name? I knew it immediately. Why would my name be in your phone as Jake Query WNDE when you also worked at WNDE? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's because it saves all of your info. So I still have your. I have your Hotmail account on there, of course, but it also has your old WNDE email. Which I, I think if I delete that, it'll stop saying WNDE. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, work email Jake at WNDE dot com. Yeah, that doesn't work anymore. Facebook JQNDE, is that your Facebook name? I, if it is, I don't need everybody knowing it now. No, I don't. I have okay. no idea. I don't think so. Because you're under my favorites, <laughs> Dad, Mom, Ashley, J Query. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. I have it. I have it right here. Okay. Well, anyway, um, we're glad that you consider us your favorites and have joined us here on this installment of Query and Schultz, where we're kind of hitting that lull period, Derek, where now it is President's Day week, and originally we were going to tape on President's Day, but then big s snowmageddon, so we moved that back a little bit. Um, but I have all kinds of presidential facts, but is that passe now because it's no longer President's Day? Yeah, and we got fired, so... Um the President's Day show is whatever. People now. love it. People no. love it. We, people we had, never like the no, President's oh, Day show. No, oh, kids love it. We've had mm -hmm. research on that, and the Got kids a lot of complaints. love the President's Day A lot class. of complaints about President's Day. Do you know the State. first president born in the United States? I just told you that we got a lot of complaints <laughs> about just, it, Jake, so I, I really I don't care. You don't, don't like history? Don't, yeah. No, I, I like history. You're just Your presidential trivia it bores me. This, once again, program is brought to you by Jake Query, lover of America and American history, and communist Derek Schultz, who yeah. does not care about the presidential fun Socialist, facts. Socialist. Like right? the fact that Martin Martin Van Buren was the very first president born in the United States. Great. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I and that's a, the only one for today. No, all right, all we, we got, got it. All, We're got good. All kinds of, no more presidential got all kinds trivia. Of. Um, a lot to talk about, but let's begin with, Derek, the topic that probably will be ongoing until it is settled out, and that is the Colts quarterbacking situation. And I, to me, the thing that is frustrating is the wrong word but that just becomes a little bit tiresome is, and I don't know if this is the case with every franchise and every fan base, but name a quarterback off the top of your head, not Sam Darnold, just name a quarterback that's in the hopper. Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz. So Colts fans sit around and I hear a lot of, so are, do we want Carson Wentz or who are we going to pick here? Well, it takes two to tango. I mean, I, I don't know where or why this narrative comes about that, like, the Colts just pick up the phone and go, well, that's our guy, so that's who we're going to pick, and let's bring him here. Well, you, you've got to, A, if it's a, a player under contract, you've got to negotiate a trade. 
B, if it's a free agent, you got to hope he wants to come here. You know, there are other franchises looking for a quarterback. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. It can't just be looked at in, in a right. vacuum. Um, and I, I get it, uh, guys. I, and, and if you're like, oh, God, they're leading the show with the Colts quarterback thing again, look, I'm, I'm tired of it too, man. I'd, I'd rather talk about anything. You know what I mean? I'd rather, I'd rather have this settled and moving on. Do you feel like the Colts on. quarterback situation is like me driving the Jeep Grand Cherokee <laughs> in the snow? A little you're bit. spinning the yeah. tires and nothing's but happening. Here, I'll compliment them for a second. I'll compliment Chris Boward. The fact that a Wentz trade hasn't happened yet indicates to me that he's holding his line. And maybe the Bears are holding their line too. And I guess the Eagles are holding their line, right? So that's a good thing. What what you don't want is Who for, sang that song? Hold the line. Dun, dun. Uh, fog hat. Love is in always on time. No, that's not fog hat. That was fog I, hat. No, it's either that. REO or Toto. I think it's REO. REO did Africa. No, that's Toto. That's definitely Toto. That's definitely Toto. REO Speedwagon. Yes. Did Africa. <laughs> no, the rain's did not. falling no, Africa. Yeah, that's that's Toto for certain. Mm, I don't think that's right. <laughs> Okay. What were we talking about? We were talking about the hold Colts. The, hold okay, the line yes. with trade, yes. Hold the line. Mm -hmm. um, you always mess me up. God, I was expecting presidential trivia to de derail the show, not this. I, I don't want the Colts to panic. You know, I, I want them to – I know that we're talking about how frustrated we are that th this hasn't been resolved yet, but I, I want them to be do patient. You, do you think Zachary Taylor panicked when he realized that all the cherries he'd eaten had gave him a bacterial infection that ultimately cost him his life? Is that a draft quarterback that I don't know about? <laughs> Zachary Taylor. I know Zach yeah. Wilson. <laughs> Zachary Taylor, Derek. BYU. He's, a, he's, a, he's an option quarterback out of James Madison. Yeah, that's exactly I, who it is. I don't know. I haven't looked that deeply into the draft. I know about Lance <laughs> and Fields and Lawrence, um, Mac Jones at Alabama. You, you don't like Zachary Taylor's? He's, he's got a, he had a great combine. Great combine. They haven't even had the, the virtual combine. Hasn't <laughs> okay. even happened yet. All right. Oh, is it virtual this year? Yeah which is kind of a bummer, but I guess we're getting the whole NCAA tournament, so right. I guess that ends up being fine. I, I just think that if if the Colts were really panicked and really aggressive here, the Wentz deal would have already happened. I would agree with that. You know, some some I, I forgot where I read it. I think in Philly they said uh, – somebody out of Philly said, well, the Eagles are smart. They're holding their line, and you know that somebody's going to come and overpay. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if somebody was going to overpay, they would have done it already. Um, but the fact is, Wentz, from where we sit today, Wednesday morning while we're taping this, it still appears to be a two-team race between Chicago and Indy. Who knows who's offered what? I'm not even going to get into that speculation. But that's that's really the thing that needs to be resolved first because we don't even know yet if the Jets – the Jets are fielding calls, but I don't get the impression that they're actively shopping Sam Darnold, at least not yet. Okay, let's say – again, I know we, we've talked about this before. To me – if it's between Carson Wentz and Sam Darnold, I go with Sam Darnold because Sam Darnold has a bigger question mark, but I think there is still the possibility that – I think we've seen maybe the ceiling of Carson Wentz. With Carson Wentz, we at least have seen what he can do when he has really good pieces around him. And he was good, don't get me wrong. But – Something happened with him where he became like Steve Sachs and like psychologically just broke. But you know you have a good idea with Carson Wentz what the ceiling is with good players around him. And what we've seen, there is tangible evidence, Derek, that even with a great supporting cast around him, the capability is there for him to regress. With Sam Darnold, he has not been a great quarterback in the NFL, but he has had no one around him. So there is still the possibility that Sam Darnold, yes, in fact, with a great cast around him, can become a very good quarterback and a, cons a very good quarterback for a consistent amount of time. Yeah, it's, it's a tough decision because both guys are big risks, right? But with Wentz, you mentioned the ceiling. At least Wentz has shown he can play at a high level. Darnold hasn't even shown that. I mean, you're right. Darnold doesn't have anything around him, but Darnold statistically was the worst starter in the league last yeah. year. <laughs> you know, uh, e I mean, even when you don't have, you know, Deshaun Watson doesn't have a ton of talent. It's not as big of a, a trash fire as the Jets, but Deshaun Watson still produces. But, but I mean, Darnold is handing off the football to what? Frank Gore and Wilford Brimley. Yeah, but you know uh, what? I mean, you know, does that does that really scare Joey anybody? Harrington had a trash fire organization, right? And it it turns out that Joey Harrington just stinks. You know, sometimes guys just just aren't very good. And and I think the problem that I that I've always had with Darnold is that I I've, I've just never really seen it. 
Like people are convinced that he's this uh, part of that franchise guy, and I'm like, I, I, I don't disagree what? that if he had been the same college player coming out of Oklahoma State, it's different than yeah, USC. Yeah, I, I just always feel like there has been an overratedness with Darnold that has followed him around, uh, you know, all of it. And I get, I get the quarterbacks with Gase. When you get away from Gase, they've done better. I mean, obviously Ryan Tannehill is the the gold example of that. Um, so I, I agree with you. I, I'm not going to write off Sam Darnold, but I think we need to – the far more likely scenario to me is that Darnold just isn't any good. <laughs> then he's going to turn out to be this star quarterback. But you're right. At least the window is still ajar for him to have I, some untapped potential. I notice you used trash fire. Yeah. You used to go with dumpster fire. Is a trash fire smaller than a dumpster fire? No, dumpster fire just got kind of – what happens is I come up with these catchy terms and then everybody jumps on them. <laughs> And okay. I feel like I have uh -huh. to kind of adjust. Uh, uh, technically speaking, all dumpster fires are trash fires, but not all trash fires are dumpster fires, right? Yes, because a trash fire can take place in a trash can. Correct. Yeah, or any kind of trash. Right, right here, right? Not a dumpster. By the way, we would not want to have a trash fire here because there's no trash on the set because these are the fabulous T-shirts from the shop, the shop indie dot com or 923 Broderpool Avenue, as well as, of course, for the shop, you can find it in Clay Terrace. That includes, Derek, I'm actually having lunch next week, a reunion lunch. My buddy Ty Garrick, who I've worked with at O'Malia's, Danny O'Malia, who's part of the O'Malia's family, uh, and Ty's father, Lou, Lou Gehrig. Not, it, Lou Gehrig, though, every time he talks to you, it echoes. It's very weird. Um, <laughs> you like that, didn't you? Uh, okay, that was, yeah, B minus. Wearing my O'Malley's T-shirt from the shop. I'm a proud O'Malley's alum. What happened to the O'Malley's family? And it would, they, I mean, obviously they sold off the markets, right? And Correct. Then, they sold to Marsh. Did they end up doing something else business-wise, or did they get in no, away from No, that's a good question. That? I think they just retired out of the business. Yeah. It was a, I'll tell you, it was a fantastic – it was a great first job. I loved O'Malley's. They had carpeting in the grocery stores, which was awesome. Um, but the customer service and just the, the – the discipline they instilled in us as young people, you had to have a certain grade point average and or else your hours dipped. I mean, it was a great, it was oh, wow. a great first job. Yeah, for us, it needless was, to say, Derek, I didn't pull a lot of hours. The, the two, <laughs> the two big regional. Well, there were a couple of regional chains. We had Shoprite and then Stop and Shop and then Grand Union. Grand Union was more of a New England thing. But my my buddies, I never worked there, but my buddies all worked at Stop and Shop, where Mark bagged groceries and Pete actually somehow became produce room manager. Yeah, even yeah. though he was like seventeen. <laughs> right. Which is manager. You, you should never ever give a seventeen year old authority over <laughs> right. anything. And he would close at night, so we would he would let us in the back door, and we'd smash cantaloupes and and do all of that uh, in the back room. And this was the name of what store? It, stop and shop. Yeah, the <laughs> okay. stop and shop in Trumbull. Okay. So I mean, there's nothing funnier than smashing fruit all over the place. Then you kind of realize, you know, it's wasteful. How did you and, clean it up? Uh, we would actually he would make Mark do it because technically he was his supervisor, <laughs> <laughs> so it was the best thing at all because Mark would get all po'd about it, and we'd go back there and break everything and be like, Mark. Come clean this up. And then he'd have to get the big squeegee thing. Were these, was this fruit that was supposed to go, or was it expired fruit? <laughs> um, I would love to sit here and say that it was expired fruit. You know, uh, I don't think that it was expired fruit. Okay, you know who yeah. could have used some of that good fruit that was not expired? Zachary Taylor, who actually died because of poisoning from cherries that he'd eaten over the course of time that had bacteria in them. A quarterback prospect died? <laughs> I feel like I would have heard about this. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's the story with the Colts. We don't, when do you anticipate, if at all, that, I, that I we're going to know? I mean, is it going to be Jacoby know. Brissett? I, I would think that the Wentz situation, it's got to come to a conclusion here. You know, his roster bonus is due sometime in March when the new league year starts. So I, th I think we're still probably two or three weeks away. But if the Eagles are going to make a move, I would think it would be before the $10 million roster bonus. I'm telling you. I don't rule out, and I have no idea contractually what his status is, if he's a free agent or has a year left on his deal, whatever. If the Bears are actively going after Wentz, I do not rule out the possibility that we haven't heard the last of Nick Foles when it comes to the Colts. Yeah, gun to my head, uh, and Sean was actually just in here asking me what I think is going to happen. Gun to my head with where we sit today. What's the date today? February something, 17th? Sure. Uh, I think the Colts are going to sign a low-level veteran, Trade for Mariota, sign Fitzpatrick, Nick Foles, whatever, and draft somebody. You know, that that's what I think but that Derek, they're going to do. But, Derek, I go back to – With where we sit today. If you were going to draft somebody, then why did why are you working with and storing Jacob Eason? 
I just I don't think that they view him certainly not in 2021. I don't know if they view him as a future starter at all. I think they thought to themselves, let's get a cheap backup and see Possibly. and see if there's something there. You know what I mean? I'm, I don't I don't think they're shut off to the fact that he could be a starter, but he's not in their plans to start in 2021. So they ha- they have to find another option. Okay, fair and enough. I, I, I would just... think that you know Mac Jones or somebody like that. I, you know, I'm just throwing people out there that'll be around possibly at 21 because it doesn't look like Fields and Lance and those guys are going to be there. Mac Jones, my concern with Mac Jones, the quarterback out of Alabama, who, you know, look, was sensational and looked, dare I say it, you know, Joe Burrow-esque in the national championship game and in the semifinals. I mean, he was right on point with his passes, you know, looked like a great passer, but he's throwing to elite level receivers that very seldomly need the ball put specifically right over the shoulder with the defense. Can't, you know, he's throwing to guys that are two steps ahead of the defender. And For just sure. Put yeah. I, I mean, know. he had a great senior bowl performance apparently as well. Um, and you know, for every Matt Leinart, you, you do have guys that have a lot of talent around them that, that end up being successful or, or, you know, look at, uh, other situations where guys have been drafted high, even though they've had tons around them. Tua was the same thing. Tua had, had a stacked roster and right. talent all over the place, and that didn't prevent him from going in the top ten. Is Jacksonville going to take Trevor Lawrence first overall? Yeah. Or are they going to trade out? No. And somebody like Atlanta is no. going to take him? No. I I don't I don't think so. Um, I thought I read something, and not that I've been looking at it real in depth. I thought I read something that like Urban Meyer was even talking with him about this shoulder surgery deal, getting this thing cleaned up. That may be. Yeah. So I mean I, I think they're 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 actively assuming that he's gonna be their guy. You know, if you are Jacksonville, and I only say this because Jacksonville's in the same division as the Colts, so they're somewhat topical in Indianapolis. I think the world of Trevor Lawrence and I think he is Peyton Manning part two. I mean I think he is that good. But if you don't see a huge gap between Lawrence and Fields, I personally do and I think Fields is going to be a, a nice player, but I think Lawrence is that good. But can that gap be made up for and even surpassed by getting – if if somebody like Atlanta is willing to send you two or three number ones and a number two in order to move up three spaces and you can fall back to, say, five and take Fields and get a number one this year, a number one next year, a number one three years from now, and a number two, do you do it? Well, here's the problem. If I trade from – I think Falcons are drafting fourth, right? I think that's right. If I trade from one to four, what's to stop another team that's drafting seven, eight, nine and being like, oh, well, they're still going to take a quarterback. I need to get to three. And then they trade up in front of you and then you lose out. You know, the the wisdom is is that if if that's your guy, go get your guy. You know what I mean? Drafting and, and four the teams is, that have done that, you know, the, the Mahomes, the Chiefs traded up to get Mahomes. If I remember right, the Texans traded up a couple of spots to get Watson. So if your guy's there, go get him. Granted, drafting fourth is not a great slot to be in in a draft that has what seems to be three big time quarterback prospects. Yeah, and I think people are really starting to look at Fields as a um, an elite level prospect now. Uh, not to Lawrence. I think I still think Lawrence is number one, but I, I think people are starting to elevate fields that throw and i'm just talking about one throw but that throw with whatever was going on with his ribs was the throw of the season last year i mean that that's that was the best collegiate quarterback throw that i've seen you're talking about the big the the to alave the the, the long touchdown that really kind of ended the game because at that point i think they went up 28 and you're like okay it's it's over now right it was the knockout blow it was that game was brutal yeah we should actually – let's get Jordan to run that replay a couple times. Just put it right here <laughs> yeah, up on the yeah. screen so you can no see thanks. that. No thanks. No thanks. Uh, you want to talk about. college basketball next? Yeah, let's do it. A lot to talk about, yep. right? Yep, we got a lot to get to. Also, uh, I am extremely bored with the Indiana Pacers. Why? So we will talk about how bored I am with the Pacers. They're so boring. Oh, so you want people to come back for a boring conversation? No, I, I think people connect with me whining and complaining on this show. That's always kind of been <laughs> okay. my uh-huh. lane. Right. So I'm going to whine and complain. All right, we'll do more whining next. Provide us with safe, pure foods for our tables. A responsibility that takes intuition, resolve, and determination to make sure their milk is good for you and delicious to taste. 
Their connection with our community runs deep, passed down through the generations, ensuring that milk is always available at your store. It's not easy being a dairy farmer, but the rewards have special meaning when you can feed Indiana's families every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. We're a different breed, aren't we? While others rest, we choose to work. Where others are content, we stay hungry. They may not see us coming, but we know exactly where we're going. You won't rest until you succeed. Neither will we. You can't get enough of us. You can't get enough of us. Good one, Jay, man. This is the worst scandal. This might this even is be... worse than steroid. Not so fast. Are you going to watch the XFL? I'll probably watch a little bit of it. You want to go through and pick some games? No, I don't. No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> oh, my God. We are ripping fast today. And how hard can it be, right? These are now selling for about $3,500. So we're back to our old ways of pulling rocks. Act like idiots on camera. Open cards and talk about the hobby. Ooh. Rolling right along in this frozen edition of Query and Schultz. Alongside Jay Query, I'm Derek Schultz. Thanks for watching us on ISC Sports Network or perhaps listening to us on podcast, whether it be iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, any of those. What about the Pandora? Are we on the Pandora? Uh... Is that does that do podcasts? I have no idea. Oh, I, I, I better just know. I better check. I, I think that's just a music service. I discovered the, uh, I mean, not discovered. I, I got the Oasis channel on Pandora. Plays everything but Oasis. I still use iHeart, which I probably shouldn't because yeah, they, they kind of they, they, they did you. us pretty dirty. Yeah. Yeah. You. <laughs> it's still free though. I still don't. I, I still don't. Pay. You know why? You know why it's free? Why is that? Because they're not paying employees anymore. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's why. With all the salary freezes, they said, but we're going to take care of the five ninety nine a month. And I said, oh, okay, sure. I don't, I don't need a cost of living raise. You know, what am I going to use that for? Uh, we've got our coffee Man, mugs up here good. from the American Dairy Association of Indiana. But the coffee mugs are perfect for wood warbler coffee. I've got the eleven blend in my left hand. Jake has the. Is that bird song? Uh, this is Eyes of the World. The Eyes of blend. the World. Okay, and then we Man. got a little hot bag, hot bag right here, piping hot of hot cup of Schultzy. Woodwarblercoffee.com. Wood warbler. We need to spell that out for people there. W A R B L E R. Woodwarblercoffee.com. I'm going to take off my sweatshirt. It's okay. a little toasty in here. Yeah. Um, well, it's the so hot you can get the Schultz hot cup of Schultz blend. You can get anything that you see up here on the desk, plus others from our good friend Jeff Canada. Local coffee brewed in Noblesville. And the best part, specifically, of hot cup of Schultz is that proceeds from that go to our new. Um, the Humane our, Society. Yeah, our, which is our new. What, what's the word Charity, I'm looking for? Beneficiary, right? I guess. Of Hot Cup of Schultzy? Well, I want Hot Cup of Schultzy to benefit people. No, I, I understand. Not only from smell and taste but and you simply, you simply say impact, it's a charity. but also to do good. Like, we don't collect anything. And trust me, if I wanted to collect, I would. I mean, I'd be, I wouldn't really need to do the show. I could probably retire if I were to collect the proceeds from this. But all the proceeds go to Wood Warbler Coffee, local coffee, Noblesville, and a great local charity. The, in the, the, the word you're looking for, Derek, is charity. Like for example, beneficiary. Ex exactly it's a good the, word. Exactly the reason I continue to do this show with you, right? You need me. We've talked about this before. <laughs> okay. okay. I had several opportunities to go solo, and I decided not to take them because I felt bad for you. Is it you, possible? You died. Is it possible that Purdue, we can say, is an NCAA tournament team, right? Yeah. At this point, when it comes to representing the state of Indiana in the tournament, are they going to be going solo? No, I still think Indiana's going to go. <laughs> it's just so hard. I, I don't to be, disagree. It's so hard to be optimistic about it. I, IU, they've got a big one tonight against Minnesota in a game. This kind of reminds me of the uh, Iowa game, even though obviously Minnesota is not the quality of opponent that Iowa is, but it's a game that you kind of just have to have. Um, they played the ugliest game, one of the ugliest games that I've seen in a long time against Northwestern, and they were very fortunate to win that, that game. That was ugly. Um, I mean, you know, credit Armand Franklin and Al Durham for hitting some big shots, but really, you know, I, I saw some tweets afterwards. Well, that was a gritty win by IU. Northwestern choked on their own vomit. That's why, <laughs> that's why Indiana me? won that game. Northwestern had a seven-point lead 
with two minutes left in regulation, and then they had a five-point lead with one minute left in overtime. I would guess their win probability was north of 90% in either of those scenarios, and obviously they ended up losing. So credit Indiana. That, that's great that Indiana won the game. Did we but, need you know, the Jimi Hendrix reference? Kind of spare me the grit and all of that. Like it, it was. It takes two to tango, to borrow your term, and I thought that was equal parts Indiana making big shots, but Northwestern also choking. Indiana, look. Trace Jackson Davis is a is a wonderful player. There's no doubt about it. But it's very difficult for Indiana to win in games when Trace Jackson Davis is not having a great night. In Northwestern, they were able to do that. The problem Trace Jackson Davis seems to have, you know, I, I think I mentioned before, Derek, his movement, his body, the way his gait, for lack of a better phrase, the way he moves, he reminds me of Jared Jeffries. But Jared Jeffries, and I think one of the most underrated things about Jared Jeffries when he played at Indiana was his ability to pass out of the low post. Kyle Hornsby, Dane Fife, Tom Coverdale, those guys were getting Jared Odell great open look threes because of their ability to go into Jeffries and the defense would collapse and Jeffries was a tremendous out of the low post passer. That's a part of Trace Jackson Davis's game that he simply, I don't think, has evolved to where you need it just yet for a, a low post player. It's the one knock of, of him that I would say, because I think he's a wonderful yeah. talent. But when defenses are able to collapse in on him and you don't have consistent outside shooting to keep defenses honest with that, I just think Indiana's too easy to guard. Well, that's the key, is that, you know, to, to be fair to TJD. Um, TJD. Yeah, Trace Jackson Davis. Okay. Uh, if I were to make a list, if we were to combine the roster, 2002 Indiana and 2021 Indiana, and I were to make a list of the best shooters, I would get to seventh or eighth before I'd pick I, my first one. Correct. From, like, literally, uh, Odell might be the cutoff because, clearly, Hornsby, Coverdale, Fife, Jeffries, all were better outside shooters than anybody that's on this team. Um, and so they're easy to guard because their guards can't shoot. <laughs> right, I mean, right. Yeah, Franklin, I mean, that's fair. Franklin that's can. Fair. I mean, Franklin's a little hit and miss, but he's a young player. You, you can't expect Franklin to carry it all himself. I think you have to be really impressed with the maturation on the court of Armand Franklin. Uh, he's become a nice player for them. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think they're really held back by and it's not all his fault indiana's got issues that go deeper than him but finessey just being a complete non-factor really hurts them right. when, when you have an upperclassman guard you need him to be able to and Derek, like either I've create said, or shoot and he can't do either and like i've said at what point if you're archie miller do you just turn it over to lander and say you know what let's just see what we've got here yeah i if he if he thought that way he would have done it already right i i, st I still think. think i still think that archie miller knows that Finnessy has to do something. He's got to factor in for them. And, and if you bench him at this point, maybe it crushes the kid or makes it, you know, clearly he's not playing with a lot of confidence right now. And he had a little bit of a better game, I guess, against Ohio State, but they were down 400 points. So who cares? <laughs> Great. Yeah. You know, I, I hit a couple of shots and we lost by 30. Wonderful. Let's talk about two other teams in the state because, I, you know, and I understand, I mean, the best team in the state, the one that's been the most consistent is Purdue. Um, they continue to grow. When they need Trevion Williams and they've got to ride his back, he has been able to yeah, take, 28 take that on. last night right. against Michigan State. Um, so Purdue, I think, is in really good shape. I, the, the other team, Derek, that I think has a chance to sneak into the tournament here, and kudos to them because I wouldn't have said so two months ago, is Indiana State. Yeah, their problem is is that you have to go in via the auto bid, and right. the two teams atop that league are really good. You know, Drake and Loyola are, are good basketball teams. Loyola's really good. So, well, yeah. you know, the Valley has had these years before where you have like the – I think Bradley, I want to say, was like the five seed in Arch Madness, and they ended up winning the tournament and going. And you haven't had like a clear cut number one this year. You you kind of do. So I, I sort of feel bad for Indiana State because this is their best team in several years. Yet it's the toughest that the league has been at the top in several years. You know, um, Bradley. What year did they have that fellow that was a seven footer that went in the lottery? Patrick Patrick O'Brien. Yeah. <laughs> How long? Let's look at what are Patrick O'Brien's uh, career statistics. Yikes! I'm going to say that Patrick O'Brien appeared in. 137 NBA games and averaged 3.3 points and 1.8 rebounds per game. He didn't even crack triple digits for NBA games. Really? Wow. He played 90 games. Okay. 2.1 rebounds. Or no, sorry, 2.1 points 
And where's just rebounds? I see offensive and That's defenses. That's not good, though. Oh, TRB, total rebounds, 1.4. <laughs> Played for the Warriors, Celtics, and Raptors. Yeah, he – and – if I remember right, they went to the Sweet 16 with him. I think that's right. Yeah. They, they knocked had, they out Kansas, a nice, didn't they? They had a nice tournament run in 06. I think they knocked Kansas they out. They did. Kansas was like a four or five seed that year, right. and, they, and they knocked him out. You know, this is an interesting year because, and we've talked about this before, Derek, but the tournament this year, if there is ever going to be a year where Indiana's undefeated season, where they're no longer the last unbeaten, Gonzaga and Baylor both have a really good chance. Now, Gonzaga, a better chance than Baylor just because of the, you know, Baylor has a better the chance of getting playing, upset yeah, yeah. because of their league. But I'm telling you, man, Gonzaga's really good. They're really, really good. They're big. They're not going to be really tested before the tournament itself. And I could see this being like the Kentucky team that Calipari brought here where they are deep into it, entering the Final Four unbeaten, and then get upset. I mean, if they were to lose. It's they just could run so, the table, though. It's so hard. Even as good as you are, single elimination tournament, you know, you think about some of the really great teams that didn't win at all. Um, you know, obviously, if we're using a local example, 93 Indiana is, is a right. great one. Um, they went 17-1 and in the Big Ten, had the Wooden Award winner and four draft picks, and they ended up not even making the Final Four. Uh, you, you just need so much circumstance and luck to, to end up getting there. But, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think, have, did they have five draft picks? Um, let's Four see. First Henderson, Henderson, yeah. Evans, yep, that's Bailey, right. uh-huh. who wasn't a first rounder, obviously, but still was drafted. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Graham. Yep. You're missing one. Uh, Although you know what, you're who, correct. You are correct in this. You said the Wooden Award winner. Yeah. And four, four. draft picks, so, so did, five, five total, right? So you meant in addition to the Wooden Award yeah. winner, because the Wooden Award winner, Calvert Chaney, of was course, a was a top ten pick. Yeah. So five okay. total draft picks. Correct. Though. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Oh, you're missing one. Oh, sorry. God forbid that I step into Jake's playpen with '93 Indiana, or any anything <laughs> from 1983 to 1993 can you Indiana name, Derek, basketball. Can you name for me, Derek, the player God. that was a freshman in '92 that transferred out of that team? Lawrence Funderburk. In '92. Lawrence Funderburk we'll transferred in '90. What freshman in and then Chris Lawson transferred? What freshman in '92 started the year with Indiana and then transferred out before the '93 season? Um, he transferred to Cleveland State. He was a native of Shaker Heights, Ohio. My best friend, Eric, who wanted to fight That's you right. at the bachelor parties from Shaker Heights. <laughs> That's right. Um, I, he might have gone to high school with this I guy. don't know. Malcolm Sims. Yeah, I don't I don't even know that name. What do you think Malcolm Sims averaged at Cleveland State? No, I don't know. Let, let's, let's, let's steer 8. it back. 8.7 right. points All right. per game. Jake's off in the snow embankment, and we sent Wes <laughs> to go get him. Let's <laughs> go ahead and steer it back. <laughs> okay. Um, no, Gonzaga, to me, I watched them play early on, and – Say what you want about their league, and I know that I've you know me, Jake. For a long time, I was critical of that league that right. they play in, and and you but know, they're really good. They weren't having a lot of tournament success. To me, they're clearly the best team in the country. I haven't watched Baylor once, right. so I guess I should probably watch them before I comment on them. But you know who else is is really really good? And they took they had to take a couple of weeks off because of the COVID situation, and they continue to impress. And I was real skeptical about their hire as Michigan. Juwan Howard. Qu- clearly, they you know, bought into Juwan Howard. Let me tell you something about Michigan, Derek. Go back to 93. I was thinking about this the other day. I remember on Valentine's Day of 1993, Indiana played Michigan at Assembly Hall. Indiana was ranked number one. Michigan, that was the five, the Fab Five team. and The then second year of the Fab Five, correct. right? Yeah. And then the complimentary pieces along with the Fab Five were James Vosco, Rob Palenka, Eric Riley. At that time, as an Indiana student, and Jalen Rose, there was like a rumor that he had been arrested like in a crack house or something that, like that. Yeah. And the brand that we had, the perception that we had, the brainwash that we had in Indiana was that in order to be a contributing member of society, you had to go and play for Indiana. And anybody who didn't do that was just like didn't care about school and all they cared about was basketball, et cetera. I watched a little bit of that game the other day on YouTube, and I'm looking at it going, you know what? Here is the Michigan team, and let's. I, I took myself back to 1993, sitting in the assembly hall watching that game, and then I thought, Phew. fast forward me 28 years later, and I'm watching one of the most popular personalities and versatile personalities on ESPN and Jalen Rose, like the lead or one of the lead basketball analysts on TNT and Chris Webber, the president of the Los Angeles Lakers and Rob Palenka, 
the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines and Jawan Howard, and then Ray Jackson and Jimmy King. And I don't know what they're doing, but I'm assuming they're fine. But my point being, I'd say for the Fab Five and the reputation of the baggy shorts, NWA on hardwood level players, I'd say it turned out okay for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, obviously there was a narrative um, about them that, you know, clearly was was race-related, right? These were inner-city African-American kids and baggy shorts, and it was shocking to right. be like, wait a minute, they're freshmen. That's that's not what's supposed to happen. You know, and everybody is supposed to be, you know, God rest his soul, Eric Anderson and throw bounce passes and, you know what I mean? And and um, and they weren't like that. So I, I've always appreciated – what the Fab Five meant as far as impact on totally. basketball, but I, I still maintain their actual on-court accomplishments are, to me, grossly overrated. There's a lot they, of revisionist history around are, just how good that team was. I don't disagree, Derek, but I think that the, the, what's lost in the rec, you know, when people recall it, is the fact that it still was an anomaly to have five. I mean, yes, you can look at it and say, well, they went to the Final Four, but they didn't win at all. They didn't win the Big Ten. But they were five freshmen. And in that era, I can't emphasize enough how rare it was yeah, that for freshmen sure. were contributing I, I mean, players. I'm, I'm talking more about the next year where Indiana swept Understood. them. They had five draft picks and the best player in the country, and they went 17-1 and in the Big Ten. Like, by any measure, Indiana was a better team than 90. You know, we talk all the time about best teams to never win at all. And and I always see 93 Michigan on there, and I never see 93 Indiana. I'm thinking to myself, well, that's Michigan wasn't even the best team in the conference. That, that that's year. fair. Um, the other thing that Sorry, I, was, I didn't mean to get all no, sidetracked. The other thing, speaking of college basketball, that, that we've talked about before, but I'm still curious about. We still don't know definitively, and a lot of people have asked me about it, is, you know, what's going to happen with – are fans going to be allowed at the NCAA tournament in a limited capacity when the tournament is here in Indianapolis? Derek, you know, I, that would be wonderful. Don't get me wrong. The two things of which, and I don't mean this to belittle the impact at all, and it's great that the city of Indianapolis is getting this. I want to be very clear about that. And I applaud, you know, the sports corps for, for I mean, these people are amazing at being able to put this stuff together. But number one, this talk of like this huge economic boom for the city of Indianapolis. It beats the alternative. I get it. All of these teams need hotel rooms. It's and that, I mean, it is what a lifeline, no question, but the millions, the tens of millions of dollars spent for restaurants and bars downtown. I mean, this is basically going to be a bubble, right? They always kind of throw those money. We talked about this. So but, but there, you don't have, so they always throw these money figures around. It's impossible to prove how much money is actually generated by this. But you don't have – we're not going to have packed bars and restaurants because of the NCAA tournament. First off, you can't. And secondly, are, are fans from Oregon going to fly to Indianapolis to watch the team load on the bus? Yeah, I mean, I my thinking was is – you have – I think there will be fans okay. or attendance at the Final Four and Championship. I think most of the rest of it will be closed. I would think it has to be, and let me tell you why. Not because – and I'm not trying to play Dr. Fauci. Having the coronavirus and what you think of fans, and, and I'm not talking about that. But for the NCAA tournament to say to all of the markets that were expecting to host first and second round and then regional events – to tell, and I don't know what cities they were this year, but I'm just going to go off the top of my head, to tell Boise and Greensboro and Spokane and Anaheim and Hartford. Pittsburgh yeah. and Hartford, we appreciate the thought, but this year we're not going to do it. We're putting everybody in one spot. The, the reason that you would do that is because you are trying to bubble it like the NBA did in Orlando. The second that you – and you're saying to – to them in this particular year on what we hope is the final year of this pandemic. We are going to play it safe so that everything is isolated and kind of under our control. The second that you allow fans in, even on a limited basis, then if you're Hartford, Greensboro, whatever, you're saying, wait a minute, if you're allow if we're allowing the fans, then why didn't we just do it here? I mean, you're still going to, you are still, if you are allowing fans, then fans of Texas or Arizona or UCLA, you know, they're still going to travel. 
So why are they traveling to Indianapolis instead of where they should have been with us? Yeah, and your bread is buttered not at the gate. Your bread is buttered from the Turner contract deal. Correct. Uh, or from, you know, Coca-Cola. Correct. Or you're appeasing those sponsors. So, you know, what's the point of letting 4,500 people in at Hinkle for one of these afternoons? Uh, as much as, as cool as it would be to walk down the street in Midtown and attend an NCAA tournament game, like, I'm, I'm expecting all of that to be shut down. I, I would tend to agree with you. Maybe – you know, 150 friends and family of the respective school, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, fine. And that's it. I, yeah. I, I just don't I, Jim, I don't think that John, the stockbroker in Portland, who's a diehard Oregon booster, is going to be traveling to go see They the still need play. to figure out what these protocols are going to be for if, if somebody tests positive on Wednesday – and they're at a regional site. What do you do? You do you move the game? Does are, are is that team SOL? Do they have to forfeit? Well, or that's does that why, player just not that's play? That's why I, I I was under the impression that by moving it all to Indianapolis, they were doing a bubble. And once you are in that bubble, yes, you're tested. And if you're the starting point guard for Oklahoma and you test positive, you go back to Norman, but the team stays there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's my thought. I mean, it, it's it's. Well, how you're going to have to do it, I guess. But they still, you know, they haven't come out with how that's all going to be treated. Uh, we have awards to get to, right? We do. Yep. We got our Winner's Drink Milk winner of the week. From the American Dairy Association of Indiana. We'll actually do that next. Okay. Uh, love HVACs. Love that play that's coming up. from Love Heating and the Air. The Shops, Bider Bowl Bleep. Okay. The Shop on Broderpool Avenue, Clay Terrace. And I'm just I'm just really bored with the Pacers. All right. We'll get to that next. And we're talking about how bored. Just so boring. We'll talk about how boring the Pacers are, and we'll liven it up with a milk toast. That's How's right. That? It's Quarry and Schultz, okay. ISC Sports Network. Stick around. Don't be bored. At an Indiana dairy farm, long work days stretch into more labor after sunset. A newborn calf needs watching. Barn needs cleaning. A tractor needs some handiwork for tomorrow's tasks. Just like in your own home, the day's chores are never done until the family beds down for the night. Dairy farmers and their family share the same dream with all of us, that what we all do is worthwhile. Bringing to market pure, safe, and healthy dairy foods is what they do, from Indiana's dairy families to ours every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. We're a different breed, aren't we? While others rest, we choose to work. Where others are content, we stay hungry. They may not see us coming, but we know exactly where we're going. You won't rest until you succeed. Neither will we. You're watching Query and Schultz on the ISC Sports Network. Your life is on the go. Now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library, high school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com. Derek, here we go. You got your milk facts ready? I do. By now. Yeah, well, you've got the sheet, but I think I, I remember. Yeah, how do you not know them by now? As much... Something as 10 cups of raw spinach, as much potassium as a banana, as, as much, much protein something. as two hard-boiled eggs. What's the last one? Not sodium, because I messed that up last time. As much time. potassium as banana, as much vitamin A as two boiled eggs. Oh, so it's as much protein as the salmon. Or as the much, salmon. <laughs> there is no much, salmon in here. No, the, it, is, it is delicious. As much calcium as 10 cups of raw spinach. That's what you can all get right there in chocolate milk or regular milk. The American Dairy Association of Indiana, of course, sponsors every year of the fastest rookie luncheon, among many things. The American Dairy Association of Indiana, who has been wonderful to us, Derek. Yeah. And we'll be hosting again the fastest rookie luncheon from yeah, the American Dairy Association. Yeah, my agent just told me, so I'm excited about agent. that. Yeah, Josh. No, actually. Josh. Okay. A big, they actually asked me. I don't know if I'm. No, I'm not going to tell you that. Well, go ahead. No, I'd like to know. Well, I, you're my 
one of my best friends, so I don't want to hurt any <laughs> okay, feelings. Sure. But um, they asked I'm... me a couple of weeks before, hey, you know, with it being still COVID and all of that, we were thinking about just doing it solo, and we just thought you killed it last year, so why don't why don't you just do it? And I said, you know what, that that wouldn't be right. I really appreciate it, and yes, I, I would do a phenomenal job for you and your brand, um, mm -hmm. but we should really have Jake because of the IndyCar thing. Like, I, I just thought it'd be kind of crushing for you. They, you know, they bring the Borg Warner Trophy out there. Yeah. And they did tell me that they did like the fact of having the trophy's size, you know, and, and just its sheer volume kind of oomphed, if you will, by having an MC that was standing next to it that was actually shorter. So I could see how they might have decided to Yeah, again, like, they didn't want to hurt your feelings, so I, I'm not surprised that, the, that they told <laughs> okay. you that. I'm just telling you what they told me privately. Um, Do you, you know the last face on the original Borg Warner before they had to add a base? I don't. Um, Danny Sullivan. You're really close. That's impressive. I'm just trying to guess time You're frame really wise close. where it would be. You're Bobby really Rahal? Close. Correct. Okay. Bobby Rahal. Wow. So a year later. Yeah, that's that's impressive. That's Do you not know bad. The, do you know the only two men on the Borg Warner Trophy to have their name their name listed in multiple variations? Uh, Elio Castroneves. No, good guess. Uh, well, it have to be a multiple time winner, right? Correct. Um, uh, Dario Franchitti. No, also a good guess. I don't know. Uh, Juan Montoya, who the very first time he won it, it just says Juan Montoya. When he won it again in sixteen, it says Juan Pablo Montoya. Okay, I didn't know that. And the first three times that he won, Al Unser was just Al Unser. Then by 1987, oh, okay. he was Al Unser Sr. Yeah, that's a nice little trivia. See, that's way more interesting than Zachary Harrison's pneumonia or whatever you <laughs> Zachary up Taylor. With, uh, yeah, okay, sure. Zachary Taylor. Uh, do, do you know, by the way, the only person on the Borg Warner Trophy who did not win the Indianapolis 500 or was not a ride-along for the Indianapolis 500? Mary Holman, George? <laughs> You're really close. <laughs> You're really close. How about her dad? Tony Holman? That is correct, Tony okay. Holman, yes. See, I'm, I'm good with the guesses. I'm good at coming close. Um, so before we get to your boring pacers, the winners drink milk, your uh, winner of the week would be. How about we stick with racing? Um, he was a 100-to-1 underdog in some books. I saw some others that had him 66-to-1, but still, um, kudos to Michael McDowell. Um, he – Ended up winning the Daytona 500 thanks to Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano deciding to do what they did and basically take out their whole team in one fell swoop. And I, look, there are people that are saying, well, you know, McDowell really had, had done well at super speedways and, and he was running up front, so this isn't a surprise. Guys, he was 100 to 1. Uh, he had never won before, okay? His average finish is 30th. So the guy's been really a career backmarker. And sure, he was on underfunded teams and all of that, but let's let's not make this into something that it's not. Right. Every once in a while, because of accidents and all of that, you have kind of a fluke winner. And no offense to Michael McDowell, I'm sure he's a nice guy and you know a guy that can run in the top 15 to 20, but that's a pretty big leap from a guy that runs in the top 15 to 20 to Daytona 500 winner. Right. And you've had Trevor Bain and Derek Cope and a bunch of guys that, you know, they won, and then they were never heard from again. You know, um, I actually thought about, because later we'll do our Love That Play, brought to you by Love uh, Heating and Air, love-hvac.com, and I thought maybe this should be our Love That Play because he was sponsored by Love's Truck Stops, right? Oh, that's right, yeah. He did have the, he had the hats and everything. That, that's different, though. The Love's Truck Stops is different than yeah. Love Heating and Air. Did you see the dude that was sponsored by McDonald's went to McDonald's at the drive-thru during the rain delay and bought for the whole team? And he's like, I actually drive the McDonald's car. And the girl, like, freaked out. She's like, what? <laughs> that's pretty yeah. cool. Did he drive that car through? That would have been fun. Uh, no, I, I don't think that's – those things aren't street legal, are they? I don't think so, no. And you wouldn't want to do that. The race was about to resume. That's you wouldn't want to, you know, <laughs> um, wear the tires. You know, the I'm going to give for my winner's drink milk, and, and I don't think that I've done this individual. And it's not for one particular moment, but – and it segues into our next topic. Jeremy Lamb had a pretty bad injury last year, and – you know, had to work hard to get back on the court for Indiana for the Pacers. And I think he's done a really nice job, not only in getting back. He's a guy that doesn't get a lot of headlines. But the thing I like about Jeremy Lamb is he just goes out, does his job. He is a consistent scorer for them. And when they need, when the Pacers need him to be a more dynamic scorer, he is capable of doing that. But I think he's giving them really good minutes. And he's doing so coming off an injury. Yes, it was not as debilitating an injury that we saw 
with Victor Oladipo. But nonetheless, to come back from injury, be able to get on the court, and be a guy that doesn't need sets going through them, but still can give good contribution. I just like what Jeremy Lamb, the way he's playing, and what he brings to the Pacers. So I'm going to give my winner's drink milk to the comeback story of Jeremy Lamb. But Derek... Um, that said, you find that to be one of the few stories in a, in a season that you say is boring. And I don't even mean to be but totally critical. I, I sent a tweet the other night. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Um, no, I muted you. Well, I did. I muted you first, so that's not as good of an insult as you thought. Um, <laughs> okay. I sent a tweet the other night when they lost to the Bulls, who aren't very good, that I, I'm just kind of tired of the same thing sort of recycling over and over again. And, and I think some people understood that. Like, I, I wasn't even trying to knock them. I was complimentary of the Pacers and the fact that they've had to deal with constant injuries and roster fluctuations, including the Paul George and Victor Oladipo trades, which I don't think they were expecting to make but ended up having to make. And it, I think it's commendable that they've been able to maintain, you know what I mean, through that. But I'm watching these games and I'm thinking to myself, God, you know, what's the point? So this team ends up being the five seed again, and they lose. And the, you know who cares? They're they're not going to beat Philly or some of these other teams that are in front of them or Brooklyn. So you know, kind of what are we doing here? And and I, that frustration just all kind of caught up to me. I think other people have had that same frustration that predates me from two or three years ago. But it just feels like the Pacers are just kind of stuck in this cycle of being pretty okay. And you know what I mean? And it's just it's fair. I, I'm just kind of bored with it. You know, a lot of it, of course, is the way the NBA has gone, which a lot of people are fed up with, of just whichever team is that year's sexy super team draw, right? I mean, it was obviously Brooklyn most recently with James Harden leaving. But, look, I don't know with the Pacers that we can say exactly what they are until you have, and hopefully it does come in time, a healthy Karis Levert out on the floor. Um, as well as T.J. Warren. Yeah, that, that's fair. They're down two starters. But to your point, Derek, it does feel like a franchise that's always down two starters. You know what I mean? And doesn't have the margin for error that others do with the depth uh, to be able to get by with that. I Listen, to me, what is curious about the Pacers is a year ago they had a coach that was very defensive-minded and their offensive sets became a little bit stale. Now they have a head coach that is very offensive-minded and their defense is like, where has it gone? Miles Turner is a very important piece of what they do, but if Miles Turner is not out there setting a defensive tone by protecting the rim, their defense becomes almost non-existent. And the amount of minutes that Malcolm Brogdon and Domas Sabonis have logged so far concerns me that they're going to hit the wall here. And then katie bar the door at that point but maybe that's when lavert and warren are back and you're back to full strength you know i don't know i mean they're fine even with lavert and warren back like i you you think they're beating philly four out of seven or something you know what i mean like i i still don't think so but you're right you make a very good point i just think the problem is is that they're just fine and you know i have a turkey sandwich most days for lunch and it's fine whatever i i like turkey sandwiches sometimes i i do the Dijon mustard instead of the yellow mustard. You know what I mean? Sometimes I put pesto on it, just kind of juice it up a little bit. But it's just kind of like every day, and it's just the same turkey sandwich. And you're like, yeah, okay. You said sometimes you have pesto and sometimes you have Dijon. But the the base of it is still the same. It's still just a turkey sandwich. You can put whatever you want on it. And that's just kind of what the Pacers are in the NBA. Like, whatever, they're fine. I'll eat it. But it's not something that I, like, salivate over and look forward to. I want to ask you something here. You're a married fella, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. happily. You bring? Do you still bring a little lunchbox to work? Well, no. Actually, um, I actually, uh, WFH, so I only, I'm only in office one day a week. WFH. Yeah, work from home. <laughs> okay. So you're working from home. So you're in the house. Mm-hmm. Do you make your own lunch? Oh, yeah. So if you if you make your own lunch every day, how can you make your own lunch every day and then complain about the monotony of your lunches? You're in charge of it. Like you need to your lunch is a euphemism of your life, young man. Like you need to get out there and you need to conquer it and say, this is I I, I want more than this. Why are you settling for a turkey sandwich every day? If you are the one in control of it, you're not in control of the Pacers at least, but like, are you saying that Kevin Pritchard is just saying, 
I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. Well, I mean, sometimes I have a Zoom call. Like, you know, sometimes I, I, I can't just run out and get whatever, some, like, elaborate lunch. Like, you and Shannon go out to eat, right. like, every single day second of every single day like some of us that are on a, a, right. a stricter budget have a 529 and things to contribute to okay we're kind of taking the long view we're not i'm not an immediate gratification guy like for me Clearly. well I'm, I'm just saying like for me it's it's about building towards something the the zoom calls that have you busy mm. I, I i gotta let you know i was at uh i i think it was village pantry yesterday and i'm getting something to drink and the woman behind me has a huge bag of like chips and all that she's doing on DoorDash, because somebody was willing to pay like an extra eleven dollars to have someone bring them a bag of Doritos from Village Pantry. Now that sounds to me, Derek, like not a real wise investment. It's insane. But when you're doing your little Zoom calls, you can have people deliver things to you. If you yeah, want. no, it, a I don't like paying the overages on that, and b you know like the Wayne's World com commercial with Cardi B from the Super Bowl, and they're like, yeah, support local. They take a huge chunk out of that. So really, the local restaurants are operating at a loss to give you their food from Uber Eats or DoorDash or anything like that. Like you're not you're not helping them at all. Go go yourself and give your own money to them and forget about the fees for these middlemen. Okay. Sorry, that's my TED Talk PSA. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough for today. Uh, we got to get to our love that play next. Is love that, right? that play. We still got biter bull bleep and. I feel like we've actually kind of hit on racing, which is weird because it's eight degrees outside. But um, some news potentially involving an event, not returning, but a series coming back to the Indianapolis really? Motor Speedway. Okay. That's in the news. I don't know. I thought it was topical for today. All right. Besides turkey sandwiches. All right. It's Quarian Schultz, ISC Sports Network. Put the pest pesto on your turkey there. Provide us with safe, pure foods for our tables. A responsibility that takes intuition, resolve, and determination to make sure their milk is good for you and delicious to taste. Their connection with our community runs deep, passed down through the generations, ensuring that milk is always available at your store. It's not easy being a dairy farmer, but the rewards have special meaning when you can feed Indiana's families every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. We're a different breed, aren't we? While others rest, we choose to work. Where others are content, we stay hungry. They may not see us coming, but we know exactly where we're going. You won't rest until you succeed. Neither will we. Your life is on the go. Now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library. High school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com. Welcome back to Query and Schultz here on the ISC Sports Network. Jake Query, Derek Schultz. Time for our Love That Play brought to you by the good folks at Love Heating and Air. That's love-hvac.com. Been around since 1920. And how exactly do you make it over 100 years now in business with a family-owned business? Well, it's very simple. The way you do it is with great product, integrity, knowledge of that product, and, of course, 24-hour customer service doesn't hurt either. That's what you get with Love Heating and Air. Right now, very cold outside. Furnace might be on the blink. You love the fact that Love Heating and Air has you covered to be able to come out. I've known these guys my whole life, folks, and I would not steer you wrong. Love-HVAC.com, 317-353-2141. Derek, I thought about this, and I would say that my Love That Play this week is not necessarily uh, a particular incident or play, but the play of a player. And I know that we talked about the fact that the Pacers in your eyes are quote-unquote boring. But I was watching them the other day, and I don't think that this guy is a starting caliber player in the NBA. But 
and I can't remember which game I was watching recently with them, actually, but coming off of the bench in a key stretch in the fourth quarter, the Pacers were able to completely swing a game. I think it was against Atlanta. And Aaron Holiday came in and gave them instant energy and his ability to – I think he does a really nice job of either facilitating or deciding that they may need scoring in that moment, and he can flat-out score the basketball when he needs to. The the consistency maybe isn't there where you'd like, but he's had a good couple of weeks, and so his solid play and the energy that he gives Indiana off the bench – I like the way he's playing, and that's why I love that play. Yeah, you still kind of feel like um, he's going to grow into something, even if it's just a, a solid rotational player, which is fine. I mean, right. you, need, you need six men and bench guards and, and all that, so even if that's what his ceiling is, fine. Um, when you're drafting that late, what was he taking, 22nd, 23rd, uh, somewhere, something like that? I mean, yeah. you're just looking for a useful player, and Aaron Holiday, at the very least, has been a useful player for them. So I actually like that pick. Uh, there was nothing in the pros or college that really stuck out to me, but I was at a um, a high school basketball game on Saturday night with the folks here at IC Sports Network, and Cathedral took on Franklin Central, and, and Vincent Brady, who's going to Air Force next year, had a dunk that you rarely see on the high school level, where he, he got way, way up and slammed it down. I think it was an and one, too, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it wasn't an and one. No, it was. Yeah, he got fouled, right? Yeah. And that's our love that play. I mean, isn't that pretty Hold sick? On, let's Watch see. this. One handed, too. Yeah, that's some pretty good ups there. Yeah. I mean, I've done that before on my basement hoop. I think the thing that's impressive about that is the way he. But that cuts. was only seven feet like, high. I can't. Can you palm a basketball? Uh, I can palm a Nerf basketball, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I shouldn't laugh because I can't palm a well, basketball. Well, one problem but... is that I have, I have very small hands. Really? Yeah. Remember when we did the George Hill show and George Hill put his hand up to my hand and it was like... Let me see. Like, put, don't... Well... COVID, don't touch, we, but... Yeah, should we get, like, a plastic divider? No, just, I mean, don't put it... Okay. Don't, don't touch it, okay. but just, like, put your hand up know. against even, it. Even getting near your hands makes me look... They're very orange. They are. It makes me kind of squeamish. Okay, yeah. Yeah, see, I have, I have smallish hands. Okay. Which is weird, because everything else, you know, buys, tries, all that are big, but the hands... Okay. Themselves are the smart. hardest part about dunking a basketball, if you if you, is if you can't palm, you got to use like you got to take off from both feet, and it's really tough because of the way you're holding it. It's yeah. hard to explain. I I could dunk a volleyball in my prime. I, no way I could now. Are you serious? Well, yeah, but I couldn't dunk a basketball. I never knew you could dunk anything. What do you mean? I'm six four. I don't know. Is this kind of one of those things where it was like 35 years ago, so nobody can? Well, verify that's what it, I said so in my prime. You, well, but I'm just saying, like, no one can verify it, so no. you can just say whatever you want. Mike Hillary would verify. Mike Byron would verify. Well, I don't trust either of them. You need to come with more trustworthy sources <laughs> why, why than, do you than not Byron trust, and Hillary. Why do you not trust Hillary? Because you've got this like core group of people that think you're like the greatest thing to ever walk Can the earth before him? that are going <laughs> to just just rave about you no matter what. Well, I mean, and, and if that means lie about you, they will. So basically what you're saying is every person that I've met or interacted with thinks I'm the greatest person on earth and therefore is not credible. I see it. I see what people, other people don't see. I don't know what it is like. <laughs> Everyone else seems to see something different with you, but I I can see right through it. Okay. So I I know the way that do you get tired of the way about that you really is that are. What you're saying? Well, that too. Yeah. There's there's a fatigue factor. <laughs> okay. That that gets into that too. All right. Uh, Buy the Bullshits next. Well, actually, I wanted to do. Uh, I teased it. Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh, yeah, well, you know, this isn't imminent or anything like that, but Nathan Brown, who is now their motorsports rider for the Indy Star, um, had a piece. This morning, or maybe it was late last night, whatever, it's it's recent, that Formula One is kicking around the idea of an American expansion. So, obviously, they've been at Circuit of Americas uh, for, for a while Wonderful now. Course, yep. um, that's where they shifted the U.S. Grand Prix from Indianapolis, whenever that ended, 07, 08, somewhere around there, um, to, to Austin. And they're, they want to add a second race, and they actually said that Indianapolis is in that mix. And you would think with their road course, it's one of two facilities – in the country that is whatever that fa uh, fia Correct. grade one bleh, right you know it, it's so pretentious f1 to me it it's is, so stuffy um, look the reality is that the last time formula one was here in the u.s grand prix we all know what happened with the tire debacle with michelin and then bernie ecclestone coming to odds and wanting to increase the sanctioning fee etc for indianapolis and they just kind of came to an impasse and that was the end of that but it was still a cool event, and it was one that puts Indianapolis back on the international calendar. And now that Roger Penske owns the Speedway, I think that that does, Derek, probably open up that conversation again. Um, 
And yes, I think that a couple of things that come into play. I think Formula One would be interested in exploring this partially because it may be billed originally as a U.S. expansion. And I have nothing to base this on other than just tea leaves, as I say. But Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, not knowing all of the intangibles and the politics that go into, you know, Texas politics, but the Circuit of the Americas track was the the governmental agencies that were there in terms of coming up with the appropriation of money and tax dollars from a state and city standpoint in Austin when Circuit of the Americas came about is now flip-flopped. It's totally different, and the legislators that are in office now don't have the same flexibility and, let's just say, friendliness towards Circuit of the Americas. And that has put Circuit of the Americas, quite frankly, in jeopardy. And there has been a lot of question as to whether or not they started doing a lot of things like we saw here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway concert venues, and they've got a soccer stadium on the grounds and things like that. But there's a lot of question about the long-term viability of Circuit of the Americas that has now, as you said, become home of the U.S. Grand Prix. Formula One knows that the U.S. is a market that it needs to be in. So my guess would be that they're starting to plan for somewhere to have that plan B to be able to resume the U.S. Grand Prix if Circuit of the Americas goes away. That would be my guess. Um, And Indianapolis would be right there at the top of that list. Look, I've been to every road course in the United States, basically. And in terms of the width of the track, you know, Barber's a wonderful, wonderful course. Um, But it's a narrow track. Not that passing is really a premium in Formula One. um, But there are few that are better, even on par with IMS. Yeah, and the drivers rave about it. They do. And and all of that, too. So I know we're homers for our hometown facility, but people that, I mean, have, it would be cool. people that don't have a skin in the game also give their it's opinion totally on it. It's a totally different feel and environment. Did you ever go to when Formula One was here? No, um, but I did. Uh, I didn't actually go to the race, but um, I've been near those cars, and they're the coolest things it's cool. in the world. Um, you know, the problem for me has always been that the cars look great, but the racing itself, is it's not – to me, it's all about qualifying because the right, rest of it, it is. is like whatever. They don't really overtake. Um, and and I, don't, I don't love road and street racing. I just right. don't. I, I my, when I first got indoctrinated into racing, it was on ovals and, and obviously IMS and, and the 500. So that's what I prefer. So I'm a little bit biased when it comes to that. But, you know, what I'm worried about, Jake, is that th- this isn't a great time for IndyCar to be um, – or IMS to be talking about this because – they're still trying to keep IndyCar afloat. You know what I mean? It's kind of like right. they've got a lot of stuff in their own house. That well, there's a lot got of questions. They've got to get in order. There are a lot of question marks just with sports in general, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, when are we going to start seeing fans again and how many are going to be at Indianapolis? And, you know, there's a million questions. But I would think that if, you know, and I have no idea the structure of the sanctioning fees and all of that and sponsorship and, you know, Penske's a smart guy dollars and cents wise. So if it doesn't make sense, he's not going to do it just to right. do it. Um, but I am, I am excited about the potential of it coming because it, to me it's the greatest – uh, racing facility in the world it is so if you're going to be the greatest racing facility in the world you might as well have the world's most popular motorsport race there <laughs> which right. clearly you know as much as we complain about it formula one is it is no question. Uh, unquestionably yeah you're right um all right is that part of biter bolschultz no that is not part of biter okay so that's next so we'll come back biter bolschultz uh and we'll wrap as well also i've got a new idea a little bit of a money-making venture that i wanted to see if you wanted to be a part of is it bitcoin or i could just pocket it myself is it bitcoin no it's not a scam okay this is something that we will (laughs) bitcoin a scam do you think well actually you know haven't they done really well stock wise bitcoin i don't think it's stock though derek no but 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 hasn't okay the currency hasn't it's up to like forty thousand now yeah yeah so everybody dogged it, and it turns out, hey, there was actually something there with it. I still don't really understand Bitcoin. I don't either. Somebody tried to explain. I just it to remember me one my time. dad telling me when I told him my Ricky Henderson rookie card was worth two hundred dollars. My dad said, "Jake, it's worth what somebody's actually willing to pay you." Yeah, now they're willing to pay five bucks for it. I right. guess unless it's PSA graded and all of that. So bite or bowl bleep and a money making opportunity for Jake. Well, it's, <laughs> it's going to be regardless of whether Jake jumps on with me, it's going to be a money making opportunity for okay. me. We come back. It's Corey and Schultz, ISC Sports Network.
Dairy Farmers provide us with safe, pure foods for our tables. A responsibility that takes intuition, resolve, and determination to make sure their milk is good for you and delicious to taste. Their connection with our community runs deep, passed down through the generations, ensuring that milk is always available at your store. It's not easy being a dairy farmer, but the rewards have special meaning when you can feed Indiana's families every single day. Learn more at winnersdrinkmilk.com. We're a different breed, aren't we? While others rest, we choose to work. Where others are content, we stay hungry. They may not see us coming, but we know exactly where we're going. You won't rest until you succeed. Neither will we. Back for a final time. Here with Corey and Schultz. I'm Derek Schultz. That's Jake Corey. You already know that. Right? You've been watching this show for almost 10 years. Oh, 10 people years know who I am. I, I, mean, I assume they Doyle do. Doyle and Derek podcast with Indy Star, mm -hmm. um, Indianapolis Monthly Rider, uh, also host of Corey and Schultz. And Jake uh, does eight IndyCar races a year. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm sure. That's true at this yeah. point. You're right. Okay. You're right. I've got a lot of name recognition. Actually, Let's table that thought because there's something, a business opportunity that I have for okay. you that I actually wanted to tackle on the air because okay. I, I think you'll be really excited about this. But first, let's get to Bite or Bowl Bleep. It's brought to you by our friends at the shop. You can see all of their shirts right here. Wonderful. Well, not all of them, but a, a nice collection of them. Uh, the Reggie Miller 31 shirt is one of my favorites with the Flojo colors. Uh, they've got a lot of vintage IMS 500 gear. Beautiful right there. A um, ton of Pacer stuff. Ball State. Larry Purdue, Bird. Indiana. ISU. Butler. All of it. The shop, com, Clay Terrace, and Broad Ripple right on the strip. They're two brick-and-mortar locations if you want to check them out. And coming soon, I'm sorry, I know that we've been delayed. That we've had a lot going on. They've had a lot going on with the holidays and, and all of that, um, at, which are now, of course, past us. But Aquarian Schultz shirt is in the works. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Is it going to say Q in the little man again? Nope, it is I not. I like that one. It is not. I, I've actually kind of taken the reins of this, so I have complete creative control. And <laughs> Okay. You'll get to see uh, what that is. That'll be fun. If you're new to buy or bowl bleep, here's what we do. I give a statement. Jake and I go back and forth whether we buy it or we think it's bowl bleep. You ready? Okay. My screen will actually unfreeze. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is the most likely cult starter in 2021. Buy it or bowl bleep? Buy it. I think it's curious, though. He's not under contract, right? No. We I, just assume that yeah. like he's going to resign here. I'm like, how do we know that somebody else isn't going to want him? If I'm Jacoby Brissett, I don't want to be somebody's fallback plan. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not right. waiting around That's a for good that. point. I, I, I want to at least see what's out there for me. And maybe the Colts offer, if, if there is an offer, is the best offer. I don't know. I still say buy it because they're familiar with them. We're getting a little late in the game here. You know, it's... It's kind of like when Katie Koleski had told you no on the prom and you're getting into like late April, early May, and you're like, yeah. and you end up going with like the girl from the wrestling team you knew. No, Nicole from American Eagle. I was a stock room manager and she was a sales associate. <laughs> really? How did yeah. that work out? It worked out really well. What year were you? I was a senior and she was a junior, but she went to a different school. Oh, well, she went. Course. She went to Barlow in Easton. You, you, you were yeah. the guy that brought the girl from a different school. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Did she, you use your managerial pull with a little, uh, you know? No, I, I never played. Harassment level. I, you never, know. I never played that card. Um, that was the best job that I ever had because it was me. We had two male managers, and then I was a stockroom manager, and then it was all, I was 17, and it was all 16, 17, and 18-year-old girls that were my age. It's the best job I've ever had. American Eagle's not a bad store, right? No, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. How hard was stocking it? I mean, what were you, 34, 32? It was great. Okay, you know what you I, What I actually used to do was I would just, we would get a shipment in from the back door. A truck would come at, you know, 10 a.m. or whatever. I didn't work there full time. I, I worked part-time hours, like 25, 30 hours a week. I, I did work whenever I could. And, um, and I'd get the shipment together and fold it. And they had a boom box back there with a disc changer. Oh, yeah. And so I'd bring my CD wallet. Remember those? Oh, yeah. And so I'd rock to fish or whatever. I played um, Wu Tang Forever um, back there, and then my manager said no more Wu Tang because it's profane. So I could only I could only play music that didn't have profanity. So a lot of it was fish. We'd rock the Hanson, like all kind, just rock, whatever, just rock music back there in full clothes. I'm sure Nicole was impressed with my your musical knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you said you got a chance for me to make some money. Well, wait, we got to continue Bobby Bobby. I'm one statement in. 
I mean, I know you're excited to make oh, some money because you're jobless right now. Sorry. But um, let's you know hold your horses a little bit. No, uh, bull bleep. I I don't think it'll be Brissett because a I don't think the Colts. I think the Colts will do something if they bring back Brissett. That's not doing anything. And I, I just don't think that they could sit there at a straight face and say that they tried everything they could do by bringing Brissett back. You know, I'd, I'd almost rather them try a bad option than try Brissett again, who we already know, because there's at least a window, even with somebody like Mariota, who I think stinks, at least there is the potential possibility that something clicks with him. With Brissett, he's 28. He is who he is. Um, statement number two. Why does my computer keep freezing? Even with Levert and Warren, the Pacers won't win a first-round playoff series. Bide or Bobley? Boy, that's a tough one, Derek. And I think a big part of that is when they come back. You know, if all of a sudden you're throwing T.J. Warren in, in in time for the playoff, you know, that's difficult. I mean, you need a month of them playing together as a unit to hit stride. And at that point, they're going to be, what, probably a six or seven seed? Uh, I don't know if they're going to get down that far because the East kind of stinks. Um, four or five, somewhere in there? Yeah. I mean, they'd have to get to three for, the, for you to feel good about it, kind of like in past years where you want to play the six – because that's where the cutoff is. I, I hate saying it. I, I think – I don't remember if it would be buying it or – I don't know how it was worded. I think they, they won't. The, so buy it. I buy it. Yeah, I, I think I do too. I hate to say that, but I buy it. Yeah. Well, you know what's going to happen, right? Levert and Warren will come back, and then we'll get all excited. They'll start playing well, and then they'll lose in five games to right. You know, whoever they play in the playoffs. Sorry, I, I don't Toronto? mean to be. I don't mean. I don't even so know right, right, right no, now. No, actually, Toronto's down right now in the East. Uh, what do you got? That, that I, Van, I think it's Van Fleet's playing well. Though. I think it's Philly, Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Boston, Indiana is your top five, and then you've got a whole mess of teams like the the Knicks, the Bulls. Uh, here's the problem: the Raptors, the Heat, who are all like a, a, a game or two under five hundred. Here's the problem. The Pacers, even with T.J. Warren, Karis LeVert at full throttle, if, if everybody's healthy and they've gelled together, they're still in for a dogfight in a seven-game series with uh, Boston. Uh, Brooklyn is going to move up, right? I, I, I can't imagine that they're not going to be the one of the two unless they just kind of toy around here until the postseason. Uh, Milwaukee and Philly, maybe you got a puncher's chance, but I, I don't see – look, I think the world of Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown, Boston's really good, man. That's just a tough matchup for them. Yeah, I, it's kind of like one of those things where I don't really care what their record is. Like, those top four seem to be a cut above everybody else in the East. Um, but you throw the Pacers in the blender with all those other teams. In the and, blender. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. What's the next one? That's my fav- one of my favorite Beastie Boys lyrics of all time. Well, I f- freak the funky beat like the ish was in a blender. <laughs> You like the Beasties, Yeah, huh? I love the Beasties. Play them al- along along with – Yeah, I'd rock Ill Communication. That w- that was always my favorite album. Wow, know, you're – People like you're License youngin'. to Ill and, and all that, but Ill Communication How about Paul's was Boutique? Yeah, I had that one too. Um, okay. Those were probably my two favorites because I didn't really like, like, the Run DMC early Beastie Boys style rap. It was too slow. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like the more – because, you know, because rap – uh, hip hop reached perfection. It's a scientific fact in 1994. So oh, when when those when you happen to be 12, when those albums and all of that came out, that was okay. when it was kind of right in its wheelhouse. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a fact, Jake. If you look it up, hip hop reached perfection in in 1994. So no, and that's not to say that it's bad now. It's so, just that, that that was when it was perfect. So NWA, Public Enemy, Too Short, no, Slick all, Rick, all of that was great. Sugar yeah, Hill Gang, no, Run DMC. No. Nas is Illmatic, Notorious B.I.G. is Ready to Die, um, Ill Communication. There was a lot of just great stuff that came right around okay. that era. Like ni- 94 to like 97 okay. or so. Yep. All right. Okay. Well, you can look it up, like I said. <laughs> All right. Money-making time. Um, have you heard of a site called Cameo? Yeah, of course. Where people pay you to give like happy birthday right. bob right. or whatever and our buddy chick mcgee does it i just saw that reggie wayne started doing it and other celebrities like us have done it and i was thinking there may be uh, an individual demand for just me to be on cameo and i didn't know if you could do it with two people but i thought we should do query and schultz cameo where people you know people all the time would ask us hey give us a shout out on the air well now we will if you pay us <laughs> i mean it's a win-win they get the shout out to Derek. loved ones or, or even to themselves, and then Derek, we get me, to pocket a little bit of dough. Let me tell you something. 
The only thing more embarrassing than soliciting for people to pay you to make a greeting for them is the assumption that people would pay us for that. No one knows who we are. No one cares. No one would pay for that. Here's the thing, though. It's not really solicitation because, like, if I just open up my door and people come in, I'm not Do you ever... have a tattoo? Oh, it's a, it's a Lightning McQueen um, a temporary what? tattoo. Yeah. L- Lightning Mc- you, Can you see this on the camera? Yeah. When, when did you get a tattoo? When did you get tattooed? No, it's, it's a temper. It's peeling off. It's a Lightning McQueen temporary. Tattoo. It looks like Bucky Badger. Well, it's. I'm just telling you, it's Lightning McQueen. What's my, Lightning McQueen? My son's birthday was last week, and he really likes cars. Right. So we got him temporary tattoos, and he wanted Daddy to have a temporary tattoo. So I, I've been scrubbing and scrubbing with my my loofah. Light, Lightning McQueen. And, yeah. That's a character. Yeah. Cars is a pretty famous disney pixar movie oh the movie cars yeah okay and lightning mcqueen uh voiced by owen wilson i always get him and luke mixed up okay yeah and anyway. that's a temporary tattoo okay so, so it's so a big you're... a big money making opportunity for you though jake well, what what do you get paid per cameo well we could decide that um uh the split would since it's my idea it'd have to be 60 40 to me <laughs> Because I'm, okay. I'm kind of bringing you into this. Like, this is sort of my idea. And then we've got to pay a little bit off the top to Cameo because they've, they've got to make theirs. But I would think if we charged, I don't know, Reggie Wayne's doing $87 for his number. So originally I was thinking twelve sixty, our old, so $1,260, but I thought that was a little bit too much. $12.60 um, maybe. We each. So I was thinking probably closer to like 50 or $60. How so old are you, 52? So maybe 52 there's bucks? There's no way anybody would pay that. Oh, people would pay. Yeah. Okay. People would pay for it. We don't, like I said, we don't even need to solicit it. This is just about us opening the door and people, people are just going to start walking inside because they're going to want us to give shouts out for everything. Like a baby shower. Hey, congratulations. You're going to pop here pretty soon. You know what I mean? Like whatever. You're, you're going to pop well, here pretty they, soon. They can script it out. They, I'll say whatever they, as long as it's not profane, I'll say whatever they want me to say. Okay. Yeah. If your wife's about to give birth, Derek would like to let her know, congratulations on the fact that she's about to pop soon. Just go ahead Guys, and drop us a line on you can write. Hi, it's Derek. You can You're write whatever you want. You can write whatever you want on there, and I'll, and I'll say <laughs> okay. it. Unless yeah. it diminishes me in some way, because I feel like I'm worried about people being like, hey, Charles and Pay, talk about how you're short. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy's, uh, you know, stuff like that. That's what I'm kind of worried about. Okay. I think I'm done here. All right. So, no on the cameo idea? You're lost, man. Derek, nobody would. Nobody. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. Nobody. Yeah, given would your current situation with us, given me your maybe situation. I thought you'd jump at this. Me but. maybe. Yeah, but then You're does lost. that mean that I've got to get together with you and we got to knock out these cameos? It's all going to go to Schultz Media LLC. Okay. We could do it virtually. You and I can connect it. I'll audio edit. Seventy thirty, they'll cut if I have to do that. So seventy. How to hard me, is 30 it to, to give me a name? What do you mean? Give me a name. Give me a hypothetical name that would be doing this. Oh, like a, a celebrity name? No, a, a customer. Uh, Crispy. <laughs> Crispy would pay for this. For for what occasion? They're about uh, to have another baby. Crispy's, well, they, they have a baby every week. Uh, Crispy's birthday. Crispy's birthday. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Crispy. It's Jake Query. Listen, in between the fact that you're texting me three to four times a day to ask me about Ohio State Clemson games or to make the point that the Grateful Dead is the greatest band ever assembled, meaning you've clearly never listened to Guns N' Roses and Oasis, despite all of that, I still wanted to take approximately 15, 20 seconds right here to wish you the happiest of birthdays. I hope that Megan's taking care of you and that Finn and his sisters are being good kids today, all in honor of your birthday, Crispy. So, happy birthday, Crispy, from your old pal here, Jake Quarry from Quarry and Schultz. Derek says he's going to take 70% of it, but you know what? We did your birthday greeting right there, and he didn't do anything, and I did so flawlessly. Happy birthday. Now, you're going to take 70% of that? What kind of editing did you need to do? Well, hold on. 50 bucks times 30%. So you got $15 from that. So the rest, <laughs> okay. the 35 goes to me. Well, someone's going to go to Cameo, but that's the split. There you go. $15 more what? than you would have made from I did the whole on thing. the couch. Like I said, it's my idea. So... I don't know. We'll, we're not going to discuss this on air. This is more. Did of a you like the band discussion. cameo? I'll call Josh. He's my lawyer. Um, Word up. I'll get Kirk with my accountant, and um, and we'll all we could all do a Zoom. Do you remember that you song want. by Cameo? No, I don't know who you're talking about. Dance all the ladies around the world. Now you got to realize. No, know? I only remember the scene from Forty Year Old Version mm-hmm. where Steve Carell is singing that, but is there, I, I, I don't know the actual song. No, I don't know the words obviously, other than Word up. All right, so what do we have next week? 
Uh, we got to show you. Sorry, I just feel like we're this show has become your Grand Cherokee, and it's off a of snow embankment now. So we should probably just get <laughs> the tow cable. I limited and, the presidential fun facts and go there. ahead and take this show out of its misery. Uh, next week, I think we're going to have a show, and okay, it'll be good. But uh, watch for us on Cameo. Yeah, okay. Cameo dot com slash Quarian Schultz or. Uh, via the mobile app. We'll set that up for this week. Let us know if that's what you want. At Schultz975, at jQuery, because I'm serious. It's a great business idea. Uh, okay. It's excellent. We'll see you next time. Thanks to our crew, Jordan, Jake, Wes, and everybody else. Bye, guys. We are ripping fast today. And how hard can it be, right? These are now selling for about $3,500. So we're back to our old ways of pulling rocks. Act like idiots on camera, open cards, and talk about the hobby. Ooh.